What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and today we're here for episode 20 of our Madden 22 Pink Slip series with our PC mod, the Vancouver Grizzlies. And we got the final episode of the regular season of year 2, week 17, Jets, week 18, divisional rival, Titans. But before we do that, we are coming off the tails of a historic, not historic, because it's happened before, but a big time week 16 victory, 38 to three over the Chargers, in which we earned a wheel spin, which we earned the ability to increase the dev trade of a player. We decided to put that on pause until we decided what players were taking away from the Chargers, because we may want to apply whatever we earned from the dev trade to a player that's going to be coming in to our team from the Chargers. So I let you guys vote in the comment section below. I am going to change the top suggested comment just very slightly, but I think you guys will see it makes some sense. So let's go to the trade menu here. So we're going to be going off the suggestion of Flame9x YouTube. It says, goes Herbert and Asante Samuel, but make Asante the superstar and add pick artist and acrobat to him. Herbert with some good stats can easily become an X Factor himself. I like that. I agree with everything he said. However, you'll see why I'm going to slightly deviate off that once we make this trade. So Herbert actually, when I switched over to the Chargers, had a skill point. So it brought him up to a 91 overall. So this gives us our full maxed out plus 10 that we earned in the victory. Makes it just feel that much better. We're going to be sending Trey Lance, who's a very good player. You know, he's two years younger than Herbert, and he's an 83. So you'd figure by the time he's 24, which is the same age as Justin Herbert, you know, would he be a 91 overall? You know, maybe. You know, like, so that, you know, if I'm the Chargers, I'm like, all right, this is not worst case scenario because we're getting a great quarterback. But the fact of the matter is Trey Lance just hasn't felt great. When I'm controlling him, I know some of that is down to the fact that he doesn't have escape artists. But is there more to it? Is it is it more than just escape artists? Is it the the deep throw accuracy? You know, not being that great. So I, I you know he's a good player. I'm glad he was our first superstar quarterback. But I, I think this is the next logical progression. Getting a plus seven in the QB department in Justin freaking Herbert, who athletically speaking, like 84 speed, 87 acceleration. Trey Lance has what? 87 speed eight. So I mean they're in the you know slightly same tier. You know, if, if Trey Lance is S tier for mobile quarterbacks, Justin Herbert's A tier. So we're downgrading a little bit. I, I, I don't know. I feel good because because you'll see what we'll do with that. And then we're gonna flip Rocky Sin, a player who I thought was kind of interesting, a chance to get you know a second chance because he was highly regarded pick coming out of Temple and it's kind of been, you know, a guy on the Colts. We brought him here, he's been solid for us. But Asante Samuel Jr., that just, you know. He's a baller. Absolute baller. Staying with the same dev trade, but just getting the better playmaker. It's a great day to be a Grizzlies fan. Welcome, Justin Herbert and Asante Samuel Jr. My issue with the suggestion comes to the second part of the trade. Because while we brought in Justin Herbert, right? We have that, we have that dev trade increase that we can apply. And we brought in Asante Samuel Jr. We only have one team captain spot that we can throw on a player. So obviously, that last protection spot has to go to Justin Herbert. So why would I then spend it on Herbert, which is clearly, like, we're not going to give it to Asante Samuel Jr. If we spend it on Herbert, why would we give Asante Samuel the dev trade increase at the Superstar and the fact that if we lose literally the next game, he's going to be one of the top candidates to get poached? So I, I think from the standpoint of we can only protect so many players, it's, it's pretty much, you know, imperative to team building that when we have a dev trade increase, unless there's, you know, all of our other guys are already Superstar, it, it should be our team captains. That get the dev trade increase. So we're going to go here to Justin Herbert. We're going to bump him up to Superstar X Factor. And let's see what kind of abilities we can add to the kid. So for Justin Herbert, I'm going to go with the same X Factor ability that we're currently rocking with in our Eagles frames. Gambler's like the best C4 ability, okay? Let's be, be gutsy. Gives me like the peace of mind. I can do pretty much anything stupid and not get punished for it. I, until I see a better ability. Which, I mean, there's some solid ones. He actually had Omaha as the superstar automatic, whatever. The, the, I don't know if that was generated because of his scheme and or whatever, his stats. But we're going with Gambler. Then I also gave him Inside Deadeye. Tight out. Help uh, Calvin Benjamin there a little bit. I gave him Gutsy Scrambler just because I scramble with my quarterbacks. Might not be the best ability, but looking at all these ones. you know, I think Homer could be interesting, but I, it's, it's so vague. Pl players with this easily enter the zone. What does that mean? How do I easily enter the zone? I, I make I don't want to make like less passes to get like is that is that something? Can someone explain to me if Homer's the best one or not? I mean, feel free to also if you're someone that knows like the meta in Madden to just copy and paste C4. This is 
the best X Factor and the four or five, because I don't have the last one yet, uh, superstar abilities. This is the, the prototype. This is the template of what you want to have an overpowered cheesy quarterback. Give him Gunslinger because I get better animations. And obviously this last one, we do need to get that 90 overall improviser rating, which he is currently at... Uh, I don't know where to see that, but he's not there yet. We're getting there. We're working on it. Work in progress. Here we go. He's 88 improviser. So the next two times we get up, that's what we want. I want escape artist. That's what we want on our last quarterback. So in the meantime, I suppose we can give him uh, this one. Protected, right? Better protection from our offensive line. Our offensive line, for the most part, is probably the worst offensive line in the NFL. But as soon as we can, we'll give Mr. Justin Eber the old escape out of this ability but i'm excited man this guy here i mean who doesn't like justin herbert unless you're in like the afc west awesome quarterback fun quarterback electrifying quarterback and the new quarterback going forward could be our final quarterback not a whole lot of upgrades within the quarterback department now that you have justin herbert on the squad I feel like you're you're getting pretty close to like justin herbert's got to be the guy that this grizzly team can go on and win a super bowl this grizzly team is gonna achieve the goal that we set out of bringing a team to Canada, he's going to be the man under center. So looking at this episode, we have week 17, week 18. We play a game, we sim a game. Let's take a look here at the Jets and Titans. I mean, we've seen the Titans roster. This is going to be more so a refresher. The Jets, interesting to hop in and play. Is there someone there that's going to be an obvious target? We'll take a look here at the Titans. You know, unfortunately, you know, we don't need a quarterback. We're not going to be getting Derrick Henry. So you go to the next. A.J. Brown would be dope for sure. But other than that, like wide receivers is an area I do want to try to improve. Our wide receivers are lacking a little bit. Julio Jones is actually not. like He's up there in age, but still held on to his speed because he's freaking Julio Jones. But that's, you know, AJ. it's kind of A.J. Brown or bust for there at the wide receiver department. Some guys on the O-line, a little bit older. You flip to the defense. They have got players from us in the past. Be it a downgrade, like, you know, we got Jeff Simmons, they got Eric Armstead. Uh, this is actually not, you know, I, I understand the value in playing them because they're a divisional rival, but not a lot of guys here. That, like, I'm going to be running to, the, like, I need that guy. That's the guy I want to key in on. Luckily, the only other team is the Jets. I don't know how well the Jets roster is looking right now. Uh, so you look at them, you know, you go to the wide receiver spot, you got Juju. You know, could he be an upgrade? Kind of. Elijah Moore. They got Garrett Wilson from Ohio State. Does he have a dev? He does have a hidden dev. That's actually interesting. I would I would be all over Garrett Wilson, potentially. I'm more intrigued by Garrett Wilson coming to my team we saw last night during the Combine crush it than anyone on the Titans, cause just because it's a little bit more attainable than someone like A.J. Brown. We got Mekhi Becton on the O-line. Uh, I don't think I would... You know, honestly, I like Jordan Mailata, but if I can get Becton, that's, that's a nice upgrade there at tackle. Um, Quinn Williams is good. Josh Allen, pass rusher, he's pretty solid. Even though I don't really know if he had to have a role on our team. Yeah, it, I'll be honest. It's not. There's not really a whole lot that I'm going like. That's that's really what. You know, I'm not seeing the team that is screaming that we need to go out and that like we'll play. But I feel like if we just the Jets, Mackay Beckton, Garrett Wilson, handle business there, get our ten wins. Then, you know, we, we probably punch our ticket to the playoffs, which I, I feel like I'd rather go into that Week 18 game knowing that we make the playoffs, knowing that we're, regardless of the result, we're getting the playoffs, versus the pressure of losing to the Jets and then being like, okay, now this Week 18 game is a must win. We're currently the four seed. We win this one. We're going to be right there, and I highly doubt that we're going to slip out of the playoff spot if we can manage to beat the Jets this week. And obviously, we want to showcase just what Justin Herbert can do, Sante Samuel can do on the defense. So I think that is the uh, that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna play the Jets. We will sim against the Titans. Jets are horrific, really, really bad on offense. So I think you look at <laughs> they're, they're just really bad. Uh, sure, I'll I'll, go, I'll I'll de facto to what the coach wants to run. Defensively is better. Totally yards, pretty good pass defense. So maybe we want to run it inside. Again, makes sense. And then let's get through practice. Hopefully no injuries. Don't want to see Justin Herbert and Asante Samuel, in particular, Mr. debuted injury. Remember, we had Caleb Farley. Speaking of the Titans, we won Caleb Farley from the Titans early on. And, like, literally, I think the first two weeks, he uh, he, missed, he missed time due to injury, which is brutal because you want to see him make a debut. Got a couple upgrades here, a couple big ones. We got Javon Holland. We're going to work on just continue pumping in points. To scheme fit, he's an 87 overall. Like seeing that, one of the leaders of the team. We got Kayvon Thibodeau, pass rusher. 
I will continue to go to Power Rush. He's pretty close to that uh, the scheme fit there. It's only a point or two off there, so I feel good making him the Power Rusher so that Jalen Phillips can be our speed rusher. And then we got the best offensive player on the team until we see the debut of Justin Herbert. Chuba Hubbard getting plus one speed. You love seeing that. Let's go. The sprinter out of Oklahoma State. Now let's go take on the Jets. That guy is 70 years old. Well, let's see it. First drive of Justin Herbert here with the Grizzlies. Two runs. Sets up third and four. You gotta remember, man. Wide receivers. Okay, we got Mechie out there. Claypool. Jones. Oh, we go. Thank you. Go right there. Chuba Hubbard at the backfield. He's a do-it-all runner. Got a second of five on the seven. This could be Kelvin Benjamin territory. We go to this guy. The no-name tight end. I Claire. Why not? Six to six for Herbert on this drive. Third and one of the three. Looking to punch this one in. Run away from Quentin Williams. Go right up the middle. And that's easy enough. Chuba Hubbard caps this drive off with a big time score. In the home crowd. Bump it. Oh, look at that, man. Terrific pursuit, Jabril Cox. He's been impressive ever since. He was a downgrade. And he's been unreal since we brought him over from Dallas. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Who's that in coverage? Jibril Cox. Wasn't a great throw, but I like my linebackers keeping in covers like that to the back of the end zone. Get out of here. Get out of here. They go for the super long. They hit it 55 yards. Matt Gay. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just... We got the cheat code under center now. Oh, there's old man Marvin Jones Jr. He can still make plays. He's a dual threat. He's a dual threat. Whoa. Come on. There we go, and with that completion, Justin Herbert, X-Factor. He's in the zone. Little tube out the backfield here. Oh, that's a drop. Come on, Mechie. There we go, throw it short. This is just vanilla offense. Zach Wilson stinking it up on the channel through multiple series. Force the punt. Actually, look like a quick drive here. Third and eight. I want a three and out. Oh my god, make that throw. Make that throw. John Mechie makes up for the drop earlier in the red zone. Oh, we hit him with the. Oh, we hit him with the razzle dazzle to the sideline. And jobber tight end number 83 makes the grab. Alright, we got his X Factor. We can be aggressive here in the red zone. Pretty much have two. Two bad balls. We get that mulligan. Let's see what we got. Who wants it? Who wants it? Make some ridiculous happen. Oh, John Betchy. Oh man, I see why. Like you know, it's just one of those things. This is it. this is something that most franchise YouTubers don't get experience that Ultimate Team guys do. It's playing with the best players in the game all the time. It makes it so much easier. Like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to throw it on a rope. He's going to get both feet, and he loses like 73 overall because that's what my quarterback does. There we go. And Jalen Phillips gets a little bit of nibbles on the quarterback there. Going to the other side, not getting eaten alive by Mekhi Becton. Working out well. Oh, my God. Cave on Thibodeau. Go to halftime. Just go to halftime. Oh my! <laughs> That's the filthiest slant I've seen from a quarterback. She got to take you to the sideline, pretty much, and then a laser. I guess ninety-seven throw power does that. Mm. 
No. Why Calvin make a play, bud? Oh, we got no speed out there. I ain't mad at it. It's Marcus May. Tremendous Florida Gator. Serve that one on a plate. Okay, third and short. We're not going to throw the screen. Predictable, readable screen to Calvin Benjamin. Try to get this on the ground. Chuba Hubbard. And Mosley misses the tackle. Multiple missed tackles. Chuba Hubbard. It's actually Chuba. It's Damian Pierce, the rookie out of Florida. Saw Marcus May do something. Represent the school. That's his turn right there. Big time run. Hey, John Mechie. John Mechie. I will say, Doug calling slants like one every four. It's like I'm controlling the playbook. Look, another slants call. We're not going to take it, but I'm just, he needs to be shamed that it's, this is what Doug's running. It's the house rules, and they just, it's it came in tune with my brain at this point. And there we go. Let's get Chuba in for his second score, which helps out the old pink score in there. Who else? Jabril Cox. Oh, take it to the house, baby. We might be five-star territory. I love Jabril. People know. If you watch my draft content, you knew I was Jabril Cox to the Philadelphia Eagles fan. And then we went to the Dallas Cowboys. You just can't talk about it. Now I get him here on this series, and he's been amazing. I mean, that was super easy interception. Don't know what was going on there. And we'll take it. And it's pick six. But uh, he's awesome. Kind of guy we're talking at this point. Jets on the three-yard line. Plenty of opportunities to uh, get another interception. And who is this? Williams. Marcus Williams. Another pick six, I think. He's slowing down a little bit. Right over the C4 logo. Let's go. Back to back drives with pick six is this Grizzlies defense. Watch the five-star. They want Makai Becton and not losing Jordan Mailata. Fortunately, I couldn't have punished them for kicking that field goal. But, you know, this is going to be a big performance. It's going to be a big one. 44-13 Grizzlies. Oh, yeah, this looks good. So we won the game. We won by 21. So that is two stars right off the rip. We had the plus minus in terms of turnovers, which is good for us. That is worth a half star. Looking at our player performances, Justin Herbert over 300 yards passing gets a half star. Not the greatest debut, but wasn't bad. That pick was, it was what it was. Uh, we had a half star for Chuba Harbour getting two rushing touchdowns. We had a half star for Kellen Benjamin having a massive game going over 100 receiving yards. On the defensive side, we got a half star for Jabril Cox getting three TFLs. We get a half star for the interception and a full star because it was a defensive touchdown. So two total points there from Jabril Cox. Um, could have swore we had more sacks, but we actually unfortunately didn't. But for Marcus Williams, he had an interception, 102 yard pick six, one full star for Marcus Williams, ends up being a seven star performance, can only be plus five, so we get a, or five star, so we get a plus 10 and an opportunity to spin the wheel ahead of the last game of the season. Before we do anything, a couple nice upgrades coming out of that game. Marcus Williams with the pick six. So we'll go hybrid. A hybrid's one of the safeties I don't really care that if it's not a scheme fit or not. Hybrid just gives you the best of both worlds. And then we have Jabril Cox, who is looking to become one of those like sleeper guys. Looking to become a Kelvin Benjamin, a guy whose rating might not be that good, but he plays a lot better than his rating as a pass coverage linebacker. Okay, spin the wheel time. You know the widgets. We were here last time. Last episode. Plus 20. Dev increase. Plus 10. Any team. Or the Monstars. Don't have any personal preference this late in the season. Any upgrade we can add to the squad is a good upgrade. I would say, hey, oh no, oh no. Plus 20. Let's go shopping from this Jets team. All right, I know the upgrade I'm going to make. Unfortunately, I can't make it because there was a practice injury that occurred for one of the players that I want. So we're actually going to make the trade from this Jets victory after this Week 18 game against the Titans. So maybe we'll go in this one. Slightly underhanded, but I found a way to spend plus 19 of the plus 20 that we earned. So let's just quickly burn through this Titans game where, I mean, hey, they're solid 8-8. Eight and eight. We got a, you know, a strong team. Derrick Henry, we know we kind of A.J. Brown. Solid guys on defense for the most part, but they're 8-8. Eight eight. We're 10-6. and six. We're looking to make the playoffs. They're trying to play spoiler. Just levels to this. I, I think we stopped Derrick Henry. We find a way to win this matchup. Big time regular season finale on the road. 
Again, Titans, nothing to play for. Looking to play spoiler to the Grizzlies as we try to make our first playoff run here. I'm going to try to see just how Justin Herbert plays in the sim. I don't want to see goose egg. I want to see competitive offense. They score, we score. I like seeing that, being able to equalize. Maybe I'd like to be more uh, aggressive versus reacting to them scoring. I'd rather be, you know, let's start dumping some points on them, make them have to play catch up. And it's actually not looking hot at all. Terrible sim performance. Hopefully we're getting this out of the way before the playoff run. 10 points, missing the field goal. Tennessee Titans, again, they're playing for their pride, and they are showing it. We are not a mentally strong team to be losing like that. 43% complete spread. Justin Herbert, absolute stinker. Couldn't run the ball. Jesus Christ, maybe I should have took the upgrade. Huge game from Jalen Phillips. Jesus Christ, 15 tackles, 4 TFLs and a sack. But uh, better team won. Not even, not even debating that. So we're going to be losing a player, and then at least we'll finish the video out with some good news in who we're winning from the Jets from last week. So looking at the scoring here, Tennessee won the game, and it was a divisional victory, and they won by 21. Three stars right there. Looking at the player stats, three stars just from the victory. Looking at the player stats, luckily these were not very good in favor of Tennessee. Derrick Henry was a monster. He got one full star for 173 yards, two touchdowns. And on the defensive side, it's actually former Grizzly, Eric Armstead, getting two sacks, which chips in a half star. Ends up being a four and a half star performance. You cut it in half, which, you know, 2.25. You round up. It's a three star performance plus six upgrade for the Tennessee Titans. All right, so the reason, I, you know what? I'm going to make it fair. What I said at the end of that last little clip doesn't make sense. I should take who I got from the Jets so that maybe there's someone from the Jets' victory that the Titans could poach away from us. I don't want to shorten the player pool. But the reason was, Becton, who very much played in the game that we won, picked up an injury, and I was like, okay, he's the only guy I want. We'll pause it a week, because they're not getting out of that one. They're not finding that back door. So we're going to send first up Grover Stewart, 85 star dev D tackle, to get Quinton Williams, who's 91 superstar D tackle. Not a perfect scheme fit. It's going to be undersized in our scheme, but that is just an upgrade that's too good to pass up. That is plus six. We're then going to flip Sam Cosme at right tackle, who's a 74, to get the big ticket, Mackay Becton. This is plus 12. He is an 86 super. Can I still not trade for him? Oh, it still lets me. I could have done it a week before, even though that's a back straight. Maybe it's because it's one of those practice injuries. I don't know. We got Cosme. That's plus uh, 12. This last one kind of pains me because Josh Palmer has about eight, 900 yards this year. But we don't need, you know. We have our Canadians in place. You know what I'm saying? We, if we lose Josh Palmer, we still have John Metz. You can step up in that Canadian role. We still have Chase Claypool, who's our wide receiver one. I hate giving up Canadians for the fact Josh Palmer, 74, normal dev, to get Garrett Wilson, who's two years younger, 76, with that hidden dev trait. We just need a little bit more explosiveness to our wide receiver core. Garrett Wilson has, what, 94 speed, something crazy like that. So that is plus two. So that ends up being... Uh, plus 12, plus 6 is 18, 19, and 20. Fully spending that. So that's the good news. Now we have to figure out who the Tennessee Titans are going to be stealing away from us. So it's 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 an annoying one. It's two new players that are, you know, we didn't even get to see Mekhi Becton lace them up. But if I was the Titans, these would be the upgrades that I make. So they are going to be sending us 84 overall. Started to have Taylor Luan, who's old. You know, pretty much over the hill at this point. But he's not... Bad. He's going to be a big upgrade for us at right tackle over what we had before. But, you know, 30, you know, 30 over the hill. Mackay Becton, superstar, only 23. I mean, between that and Evan Neal, we've lost a lot of talent this year in losses on the offensive line. Uh, and then they're going to send us Christian Fulton, 80 normal dev corner, to get Asante Samuel, 84 star dev corner. They're going to maximize that plus six. I mean, that was a bad loss. That was a bad one to take on the chin to close the season out. So they're going to maximize that plus six. And, you know, we lose back to, we lose Asante Samuel. But hey, before this episode, we didn't have either one of those players. And we still end up with Taylor Lewan and Christian Fulton. Could be a lot worse ahead of this playoff run. So drum roll. We are taking on in the wild card round the 10 and 7 Cleveland Browns. Browns, they're not as good in the sim this year as they were in Madden 21. Thank God. Madden 21, they were in the Super Bowl. It's the Browns and Cowboys. Every single day. Let's take a look at their roster. What do they got going on? Has anyone developed any any surprising players? Any surprising free agent signings, draft picks? They got you know, still Baker Mayfield at quarterback. You got Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Okay, 
Jarvis Landry, James Washington, DPJ. So nothing crazy at wide receiver. Hooper and Joku, very familiar roster. Not seeing anything new. Their offensive line's outstanding defensively. They re-signed Clowney. Got Miles Garrett. Uh, DJ Jones at D-tackle. I think he came more from the 49ers. Linebacking core. JOK's an absolute savage. Better than that, you know, it's not the strongest linebacking room. They had Denzel Ward, Newsom, Greedy Williams. Okay. John Johnson and Delpit. So it's it's pretty much the Browns that you would know and love right now. Tough, 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 tough. Especially Miles Garrett. Just an absolute game wrecker. You know, we got a chance for sure. I, I think we're very hot. I think we got a terrific quarterback under center. We're going to go improve our offensive line here just a little bit. We're going to slide Taylor Luan over to the right tackle spot and get a picture of what our team looks like as we enter the playoffs. I suppose, too, to close this episode, we should look at the stats. Stats are always going to be a little bit skewed in pick slips because some, most of the players, I mean, not most, but, uh, you know, a lot of our starters probably played for different teams at different points throughout this year. So it's not like they had all that production with us, but let's just kind of see as we close it out, ahead of our playoff matchup, what's going on? And I say that because Justin Herbert, most of Justin Herbert's stats, minus two games, were at the Chargers, so 4,300 passing yards, 26 touchdowns, 16 picks, not great, also not that bad, and for those of you that are going to be curious, let's look at what Trey Lance did, 4,400, 30, and 13, so kind of similar, comparable for sure, And you, but I, I, my argument would be if Justin Herbert was on our team this whole year, he would have a lot better numbers than that. Running the ball, 1,600 yards, 18 touchdowns for Chuba Hubbard, averaging over 100 a game. Very nice. Got four vultures there from Pierce, which are, you know, it doesn't feel fair to say vultures. He's, you know, has a role in this offense for sure. Receiving, we got 1,000 yards. Marvin Jones Jr. did most of that with the Dallas Cowboys. 975 and 5 for the cheat code at tight end. 65 overall, Kelvin Benjamin. He is that damn good. Uh, 969 for Claypool. Chuba Hubbard, 371. Um... I guess you could look at Palmer. Look, Palmer with us, not bad. That was a solid year. He was our wide receiver three for most of the season. 800 yards, four touchdowns for him. Uh, looking at the defense now, this is where it's a little bit more impressive. Drew Cox did a lot of those numbers with the Dallas Cowboys, but I'm, I'm here for it, man. He might go up dev trade for us this year based on that production. Singleton was here the whole year. 115 tackles, 8 TFLs, 3.5 sacks, 89 tackles, 2 picks for Sejus. Uh, from the sack department, just ridiculous numbers. 9 TFLs. 17 sacks for Jalen Phillips. 23 TFLs, 10 half sacks Jeff Simmons. Now, he did come over from the Tennessee Titans, but I, I think he did, like, I would say it's fair to say half of that with us. He was very good. 19 TFLs, 9 sacks, 8 Hutchinson, 7 TFLs, 8 and a half sacks came on Thibodeau. Uh, Quinn Williams did most of his games with the Jets. 21 TFLs, 6 sacks. Uh, excited to see what he can do for us going through this playoff run and into next season. On the defense, uh, for it picks, 4 picks Fulton. We just acquired him, so he didn't do any of that with us. Three picks, Marcus Williams. I actually think he got all those while he was a member of the Grizzlies. Two picks, Jabril Cox, two, four, six. One thing you could definitely say is interception is not the best, but we've had a little bit of a revolving door in that secondary, so I'm not going to hold too much of that. 84% for Haralahu on his kicks, and Matt Ariza over 50 yards up high. I mean, just can. Absolute cannon of a leg. Looking at the yearly awards here very quickly. We have Mahomes is the MVP. Not much there for us and our team, but that's fine. How much player do you want to Lamar Jackson? Drew Barrett coming in at number seven. Defense player do you want to TJ Watt with Jalen Phillips coming in at number three. Jeff Simmons at number eight. Offensive rookie do you want to Kenneth Walker the third. Damian Pierce coming in at number five. Mechie at ten. Defensive rookie there goes to Aiden Hutchinson, the player that some people may say, if you saw that star dev, got robbed of his dev trade scenario. So maybe with the defensive rookie of the year, he goes up dev. But we have him. Runner up was Kayvon Thibodeau. We just have ridiculous young talent on the Grizzlies' defense. Mahomes is the top quarterback. Best running back went to Derrick Henry with Chuba Hubbard coming in number four. Best wide receiver went to Keenan Allen with Claypool at six. Marvin Jones Jr. at seven. O-line, I don't know if we'll have anybody here. We do not. Best D-line went to Ngakwe. Jeff Simmons coming in at number six. Hutchinson at nine. For linebacker goes to TJ Watt. Jalen Phillips, runner-up at number two. And in the secondary goes to Derwin James. Hey, you know what? I'll take that. Fulton was playing out of his mind, the third best corner in the AFC, and he was kind of a consolation. We got him in a loss. So that's nice going forward. Maybe you can get a dev trait off that normal and, you know, be somewhat comparable to Asante Samuel Jr., who we lost. Um, so very happy with this team, man. Excited to go on this playoff run. But that will be for the next episode. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. 
I'm going through cold. I don't know if I sound a little different. I have a head cold. Of course, it's uh, uh, of course combine weekend. Get the head cold. But if I'm feeling a little bit better tonight, I will have my quarterback rankings go live. A little bit of a double upload here on Friday. If not, if I'm feeling like shit, I'll probably just have it to good to go for Saturday, and that will be our Saturday upload. But thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it, and I'll see you back here in the next one. Peace out.